The County of Orange is a proud supporter of Curiosity Quest and the adventure it brings to viewers of all ages. Hey everybody, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, our topic, we are all familiar with it. It came to us from Sohail and she wrote, Dear Joel, I was listening to the news about people in plastic bags and I was thinking that we don't have to use any of them. Instead, we can just buy reusable ones and keep bringing them instead of getting new plastic bags. That's my idea. Well, Sohail, it's your idea that has brought us down to a beautiful SoCal beach. We're gonna explore the effects that plastic bags and other plastics have on our environment. So let's get started on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Are we really doing a good job at cleaning up our environment? I mean, I'm here on the beach, plastic bags, plastic bottles. Look at this, the style, look, look at all this stuff right here, right here on the beach. Come on guys, we gotta figure out a way to clean up our planet. Come on, we gotta clean it up today. We can't wait another day. Let's go, come on. All right, so to help us talk about plastics and their effect on the environment, I'm here with Dr. Marcus Erickson. How are you doing today? Good morning. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Thanks for having us out here. Now, you're with a group known as Algalita. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, the Algalita Marine Research Foundation, we're a group of scientists that study the impact of plastic debris on the marine environment. Plastics that leave our coastal watersheds and wash out to sea and just stay there for thousands of years even. Wow, so this is a pretty serious problem we have, right? Yes, so we, we first saw plastics in our homes about 50 years ago. But the problem is that plastics, they never go away. Uh, so we're now taking a material designed to last forever, not biodegradable, and we're making products designed to be thrown away, like bottles and bags and straws and cup lids and forks and knives and so forth. Right, you know, our, our letter today was talking about plastic bags, and I know that's in the news a lot lately about how we should get rid of the plastic bags and use re reusable bags. Are there a lot of plastic bags that make their way in the ocean? Unfortunately, yes. If you go to any storm drain that's that's washing out to sea, and you'll find all the storm drains in your cities, they connect, and yeah. you find big pipes that just face the ocean. And you'll see bags go by. Also bags, bags and bottles, bottle caps, all the disposable stuff that we create out of plastic is washing down our storm drains out to sea. Now, we're not encouraging people to go out and look at their storm drains necessarily, but we're trying to bring awareness to what is going down the storm drain because of our use of this, this plastic material, right? Our research has found that in just nine years, the amount of trash that's on the ocean surface, 2,000 miles from here, it's doubled in just nine years. So it's a very quickly uh, growing problem. How much trash is in the ocean? Um, probably, I'd say about 3,250 pounds. Billions of trash. A lot of trash is in the ocean. And it's very dangerous because the fish can't breathe. And we share water with the fish, so we need to make sure that we don't make the water dirty for the fish. Do you want to drink dirty water? No. I don't want to drink dirty water. I, I don't want to drink the ocean water, to be honest with you. No, and I don't think the fish do either. We're looking at this right here, and you're saying that in this small area right here, there's a piece of plastic. Yes. And in nine years, another piece of plastic showed up in this small area. Exactly, across the entire ocean. So it may not be that big in this small area, but think about how big the ocean is. That, that's yes. what's mind boggling. It's huge. So it's we've got roughly five million square miles of ocean. It's twice the size of the United States between here and Japan. That's a lot of area. If you add up those little rice grain sized particles of plastic, yeah. it amounts to, we estimate, about 3.5 million tons of plastic sitting in the middle of our ocean. Yes, in the world's oceans. Wow, okay, so we gotta bring some awareness here. Exactly, yes. All right, so where's the storm drain at? Well, if we walk this direction, you'll see where all the storm drains are meeting in a big giant pipe 
that's flushing out to the sea. All right, let's, let's right go. This direction. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Hi, I'm Janet, and I believe that recycling begins at home. So if you're at home, you should start like taking the cans you have in bottles and begin to recycle them because it really helps out the environment. And you should also start recycling at your school because it also really helps out. And if you begin recycling all the paper and cans at your school, then you can really make a difference in your community. Oh, that stinks. So this is where all the city storm drains, they come together, this network, underground network of tunnels, and it comes out here. Oh, it smells really bad. This yeah. is all coming from the gutters and everything. That, oh. This is all, all the storm drains in your streets. Oh, all that stuff. That, you, you see those signs that says don't dump oil here? Yeah. Well, the reason why you don't because it comes out right here. Oh. It goes to our ocean behind us. But you can see other stuff goes down storm drains, like bags and bottles and all kinds of random chunks of plastic. That's, here's a, a candy wrapper down here. Man. Mixed along the seaweed. And all these things are destined because no one's picking them up. It's hard to capture all the waste we produce. It's going out to sea, but we're finding it 2,000 miles from here. Really? So this, this I mean, it's kind of that message in the bottle kind of a thing. It's yeah. going to end up traveling all the way out in the middle of the ocean. It lasts forever, but we throw the stuff away. We use it, it one time. But or it wears away. And we're, we find it, when we begin skimming the ocean surface, just right here, all the way to Hawaii, we always find plastics. When you get out to the middle of the ocean, though, they become these fragmented particles. And those particles could be 20, 30 years old. Really? The ocean is like a, a toilet bowl that never flushes. It, you have circular currents, and our trash from the last three, four, five decades is getting stuck in the middle of these oceanic gyres. What is a gyre? Fixing stuff? A gyre are computers in the ocean. Slang term, right? Sub gyre. Type of trash or something? Another good question. I'm glad you asked me that. A gyre is something you eat. I think it's made with lamb and tender meat. A gyre. That's the um, one fish that's out there that kind of helps the other fish stay away from all the trash. What exactly is a gyre? Well, there are five oceanic gyres in the world, subtropical gyres. A gyre just means rotating. So an oceanic gyre is rotating the ocean. There's a North Atlantic. The entire North Atlantic is spinning, the North Pacific gyre. So now how long will it take for, you know, these, these plastic pieces? A piece of plastic, like this thing, to float to Japan and back might take five years. Okay. But it's not going to come back to this beach. It's going to slowly rotate and get stuck in the middle, where it never goes away. And it just sits there, and then you said yeah. it doesn't break, it breaks down. Well, it, it, it breaks apart. It doesn't break apart. down. It doesn't break down into the basic elements that it's made from. It, it breaks down to the basic plastic polymer, that long carbon chain that we call plastic, non-biodegradable, designed to last forever. Yeah. It breaks down to that, and that's what our ocean is turning into. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. When you go to the grocery store and you um, buy stuff in those plastic bags, those plastic bags go to our ocean and um, cause a lot, of, a lot more waste than we need to make. And um, if you just use these reusable bags when you go shopping, like that can reduce a lot of unnecessary trash. We have been going out to sea now for the last nine years and we skim the ocean surface to look to see what's there. Uh -huh. This is the end result of, of this and this and the straws and the bags. So and this, this is when they're the broken down a little bit. Yeah, so the sun will break down all these plastic items into smaller particles down to the microscopic plastic polymer, that non-biodegradable long carbon chain that we call plastic. That doesn't degrade. So we find out to sea that all this plastic trash is turning into soup, this synthetic plastic soup. And here's an example of it. This we collected earlier this year by skimming the ocean surface. This is roughly six miles using a one meter wide net and just dragging it for six miles. We pull it up, on the end of our net is a sock. We dump that sock into a jar and that's this. And you can see all those plastic fragments mixed up with little krill and jellyfish and a few small fish in there. Our research involves taking these, we dry them out, we pull the plastic particles uh, separate, them, separate them from the, the marine life mm -hmm. in two jars. We dry it out. In every sample, the plastic is almost always heavier. Really? And in fact, our first time doing this 10 years ago, 
the plastic was six times heavier than the, the total mass of all marine life on the ocean surface in our study area. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. So Scott, tell us, what is a watershed? Watershed is where all the runoff water goes and collects into a little stream, and that goes to a bigger stream like a river, and that river goes all the way down to the ocean. So everything turns out to be connected from your backyard all the way to the ocean. You trying to tell me that all the water that's right here and all the trash that may be floating down it is going to connect to that bigger ocean? Yes, sir. Get out of here. Yeah. Come hate on. To, hate to break it to you, but that's what happens. Are you serious? Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. They, just, they assume this place is like a dump, so they throw their mattresses, cans, glass in here, and just don't think anything of it. But they don't realize it goes all the way down to the ocean. No kidding. And so all we have to do is just pick it up, right? Pick it up, and you solve the problem. All right, so Dr. Erickson and Melissa and I are going to show you what two minutes and a little bit of caring is going to do. All right, ready, guys? Let's go. It. Three of us in two minutes. Can we, can we examine this in the lab? Sure. Let's go see. <laughs> no, we don't want to. Let's go to the lab. What is the sea lab? A sea lab is a lab in the sea. Something to do with the ocean? A lab in the ocean. A lab where scientists learn about the sea? It's actually where a lot of scientists go and they study the animals from the sea. Yeah. Hmm. Quite fascinating, if you ask me. <clears throat> so we are in the sea lab here with Dr. Erickson, of course. Tell us, what's a sea lab? So this is where we process the samples we collected uh, 2,000 miles from here. So mm -hmm. we go out there, we skim the ocean surface, and put those all that junk into a jar. And those jars come here, we process them, and we try to figure out, okay, what kinds of plastics are on the ocean surface, uh, and what's happening to them, their sizes, their colors, and trying to figure out in a very descriptive way, what the issue is. Okay, and so we're going to look at this under a microscope? This yes. is off the ocean, huh? Yes, I'd like to introduce you to Gwen, our, our, our lab technician, who's now actually processing a sample right now under a microscope. You can see what we're talking about. Oh, so that's, I see a computer right there, but that's under the microscope? All right, so Gwen, we're examining the sample they brought back from the dryer? Right, mm -hmm. This is what the sample looks like when it comes back. It's right. in liquid preserved in formalin so that the plankton doesn't break down. What are plankton? Plankton are nice little creatures that you can pet. Planktons are like those things that whales eat and they're in SpongeBob and they're evil. Little tiny organisms that live in the sea. Fish eat. Big whales eat on. It's good stuff. Plankton are animals and algae that are in the environment that are moved around by currents. So now what did you do? You just What we do is we uh, take the plastic out. In this picture, you can see different types of plastic here. And these are the different types of plankton that are there. So th this piece right here is a piece of plastic? That's a piece of plastic. That's a piece of plastic. That's a piece of plastic. <laughs> That's plastic. And this piece right here is a plastic. Unbelievable. And this is under a microscope, so if I look at it just in there, it probably doesn't look nearly, you know, it doesn't look that big at all. No, it doesn't. This was, it was scooped out of the ocean. Right. And put in the jar, and we're basically looking just a, a sample out of the middle of the ocean, 2,000 miles from where we're at. Yes. And we're finding lots of plastic, a little bit of plankton here. Yes. And every little s small area, there's plastic in this, in this huge ocean. So now, here at the lab, you're going to take the plastic pieces out. Right. What we will do is we will separate the plastic from the plankton and then weigh the plankton and weigh the plastic and compare how much okay. is there. Okay. Can we do that right now? Sure. All right. So I don't need like goggles or gloves or no. lab coats. <laughs> okay. I was, I was hoping I would. Very simple. Something. Very simple. All right. And I think this is plastic. Is that correct? That's correct. 
Is that plastic? No, that's a shell. White piece right here? Yes, that's plastic. It's a piece of plankton. Oh, this is plankton. This this thing smells, by the way. You know, on the screen that look at that. That is a shell, right? Yes. That's not a shell. That's plastic. That is a piece of plastic right there. So let's go check out a sample that's already been sorted, analyzed, and ready to view. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. So we're on the side of the Fullerton Creek here. What do you guys do? What does the club do down here? Um, we pick up the trash that's around here, like all the plastic bags and bottles and stuff. Um, we do this because, like, it, so to make sure that it doesn't reach the oceans, because there it doesn't biodegrade, so it's really harmful to the environment and the animals that live in the ocean, and it's not really good for the environment at all. And many um, animals mistake plastic bags for food, and they eat it, and it's really bad for the sea life. So now, anyone could do, right? Yeah, just. Every local community has one of these watersheds, and anybody can come out here and pick up some trash. Right, so Gwen, what are we looking at here? This is a sample that has been completed. We were in the process of sorting the other sample, uh -huh. but when it, that one will be finished, it will be very similar to this. It will be divided into the different types of plastic and to the different sizes. So now, is this, is this plastic uh, bag? That, that's plastic? part of a plastic bag, yes. Now, can we look at this? Right? Yes, go ahead and pour it out. And those are pieces of plastic that have broken down. Can I touch them? Mm -hmm. After I touch them. <laughs> Each type of bag manufacturer has their own recipe for making the plastic bags. Sure. So each one would break down at a different rate. And the fish mistake this as food? Yes, fish and other organisms. The birds, as well as the turtles, and mammals. This is incredible. Every single sample that we've taken out in the Pacific Ocean has had plastic in it. Yeah. That's very unsettling to yeah. think that even way out in the middle of the Pacific, there has been no sample that has not had any plastic in it. Well, this is an eye-opener again. In the lab. I'm, I'm speechless. I, I, do you want me to stick around to help you for the next 30 hours, uh, separate this if out? If you've got the time, we're looking for volunteers. Okay, um, did you guys hear that out there? So they're looking for volunteers, uh, qualified volunteers, I would assume, right? I'm not qualified. Yep. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm chickening out, aren't I? Okay, I'm here, I'm here. Let's, let's do it. Dr. Erickson and I are having a ball. So this is the, the junk from the, the fishing industry. Now, boats and big ships, they'll make some trash. And that's what we think that trash in the ocean comes from. But the truth is, most of it comes from land. It's as simple as a bottle cap going down a storm drain, or a bag, or a bottle, or a fork, or a straw. That's most of the trash in the ocean. That's where it comes from, from land. You know, this is, these are some of the bigger pieces. Obviously, this didn't come from a boat, did it? This is where the, uh, the the soles of shoes were cut from this this flat piece of plastic. <laughs> so not quite your size, but no. you can see this didn't come from a ship. This came from land being washed out to sea. So we find most of the stuff we find comes from uh, buckets and boxes and other disposable plastic materials. And this is all stuff you pull out of the ocean. Yeah, things oh, like here's a, a a jug. Oh wow! And so this is on the process of breaking down, huh? We found this off the of California's coast. Oh, yeah. That's not from the uh, uh, United no, that's, States. No, that's not from the United States, but you found it off California's coast. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. I want all of the children out there that care about their environment and like care about their future to become environmentalists and help out creeks like this one and all of their neighborhood and make it cleaner and safer environment. Uh, the fishing industry, they've changed from making uh, natural, like hemp fibered nets and rope. In the last half century, it's now all nylon or monofilament polypropylene. It's all plastic. It's designed to be durable in the ocean and last forever. The problem is, they sometimes lose the stuff. Yeah. And it lasts forever. Like one piece of netting, it's, it's, it becomes an indiscriminate killer. And it can kill, let's say, in a couple of decades, one net can kill hundreds of thousands of fish as they get caught. Uh, no fisherman pulls them out because the net's lost. Yeah. Their bodies decompose, and those nets keep on fishing for wow. decades and decades until we get them. What's interesting is that we don't find styrofoam out in the ocean. 
not in big pieces. Yeah. Because it's so lightweight, has a very large surface area and a very small mass, the sun breaks it down very quickly. So this and plastic bags become that soup much faster than a hard piece of plastic does. Ah. So that jar I showed you full of fragments, that's the hard plastic sits around for a long time. What you don't see in that jar, or under a microscope you do see, are the fragments of plastic bags and the soup that once was a styrofoam cup. Wow, wow. We gotta change our habits, don't we? Yes, and quickly. What is something you could do right now to help clean up the environment? Right now, we can uh, walk as much as possible, ride our bikes when we go things so that we don't pollute the air. And we can recycle our bottles from the water or our cans and our glass and our plastics. Cleaning the bay by going to the beach and cleaning up the nasty cigarette buds that are left behind. And I can recycle. I can turn the water faucet off while I'm brushing my teeth. What can I do personally? Yeah. I can recycle my old electronics. I can recycle my plastics, my cans, just like everybody else can too. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing my part. Are you doing your part? I am. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty clean. Looks pretty clean to me. All right, so when you're trawling behind a boat, how far out is this line, and how do you know when to bring it back in the boat? Well, the trawl, we call it the manta trawl. It's about one meter wide mouth. It's like a pool skimmer, but we're skimming the ocean surface. And we'll let it out maybe 100 yards behind our vessel, and we time how long the trawl is out. We don't want to have it out there too long, otherwise it gets over full with, with plankton. Mm -hmm. So we'll maybe keep it out there for maybe an hour, two hours, just skimming about 30 centimeters deep. And so, and you go further down also, right? We have a second trawl called a bongo trawl. It has uh, two large circular openings, and that'll go down to 300 feet. Wow, and you're finding plastic down there as well? We find plastic up and down the water column, from the surface to even down in sediment. Tell me a, bit, a little bit about this raft you call junk. So junk is a raft that's actually made from junk, from 18,000 plastic bottles. Uh, we use fishing nets to wrap those bottles into 24 foot long pontoons. And we oh. built a catamaran. So we took 24 sailboat masts found from junkyards and made a big square deck, as big as a boxing ring, on top of all these bottles. Wow. And on top of that, for a place to live, we figured it had to stay dry. And we found a, a Cessna 310 aircraft, the fuselage, and that became our, our cabin for three months. Wow we would say, okay, here's our raft, but look what the ocean looks like. And we'd show them a jar and say, this is the plastic soup that our oceans are turning into. So we had this soup of plastic particles, very thin from California to Japan. When I say thin, the best analogy is like a handful of confetti of plastic fragments spread over a football field. Oh, wow. And there are nine million football fields in the Pacific Ocean. So the idea of cleaning it up is perhaps not an option. What we can do is a cultural fix. We can change what we're doing here on land to make better products, use less plastics, and recycle. Isn't it amazing? These ambassadors of our environment. Stephanie, tell us a little bit about this program that these Troy High School students are involved in here in Fullerton, California. This is a great partnership between OC Watersheds, Earth Resource Foundation, and these amazing students. And we went into their classroom and educated them about watersheds, what all these products are made of, and where it goes. And then we actually brought them out here into the watershed, into the creek, so that they could really get connected with the trash. And so it's really great. You know, it's amazing. We, we just obviously met with Dr. Erickson from Algalita, and, and we saw all that all that plastic in the ocean yeah. and all the trash in the ocean and it's amazing that we're actually seeing people really make a difference students make a difference right here before it even ends up out in the ocean before it ends up to the beach before it ends up in the next watershed right here yeah they get it and, and this is again this is so simple and, and, and you can do this anywhere right anywhere but you have to be belong to a club though right no. no. Oh, really? You can just get a bag and walk out your front door and start picking up trash. 
And that's what we can all do. We don't have to wait for an organized beach cleanup or river cleanup. Just pick up a bag of and head out the door. But Stephanie, that's so uncool though, you know, right? It's uncool. Mm, not really. Of course, wait a minute. I'm thinking about that ocean again. Yeah. And all that stuff in the middle of the ocean. Hmm. That's Ooh. not cool. That's not cool. That's not cool. Throwing litter is not cool. Yeah. All right, so Stephanie, you and I should probably get out there and help the students, right? Yeah, let's go pitch in. All right, well, before we do that, I want to thank everyone at Agalita Marine Research Foundation and everyone at OC Watersheds, and of course, all of the students here at Troy High School for making a difference and showing us how we can truly be the difference. And I especially want to thank you, Sohail, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Now, if there's something that you're curious about, let me hear from you. Go to kvcr.org, click on the Curiosity Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. Now remember, this is, uh, no, this is my planet. My planet. My planet. My planet. My planet. My planet. And it's my responsibility to take care of it. So I'm curious, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green and I'll see you next time. All right, Steph, come on, let's get to work. Scott, how old are you, man? 18. 18? Yep. Wow, all right, and your birthday is what, in December or something? No, it's actually 9990. No. So my ninth <laughs> birthday was on 9999. Whoa, dude, dude, that is wicked. You're like one of those numerical persons that are people. Some say I'm like a super person, yes, <laughs> I, I accept that. Wow, Scott's going to have his own show in no time, let me tell you, man.